Hello and welcome back to an E39 source video. We're finally back on an E39 M5. I'm Ryan, that's my 2000, you guys know me by now. Today we're doing motor mounts on a customer car. This is a 2000 E39 M5 in carbon black, 179,000 miles, and what we believe to be original motor mounts in here. So it is certainly time to do them. Uh, you'll kind of know if they're real wet at the bottom, unless something's leaking on them, they probably need to be replaced. If you feel a lot of vibrations through the car, if the engine moves too much uh, when uh, just kind of blipping the throttle from idle to say 2000 RPM uh, with the hood open, or again, just excessive vibration is, is the primary reason to replace these things. So um, we'll talk a little bit about the parts we need, the tools we need. I'm going to give a really, really brief overview of exactly what we're doing today, and then we'll get into the step-by-step -step process. So the genuine BMWs are pretty pricey. These Corticos or Cortecos seem to be just as good at a much better rate. Uh, obviously, we're going to need two of them. There's one on the right and one on the left of the engine. So the one on the left, the driver's side, is ending in 95 there. That's the part number, 22111092895. We'll need one of those. And then the one on the right side of the car is the even number. And that's the same number with a 6 at the end, 22111092896. So we'll need these parts. These Corticos or Cortecos do not come with uh, the hardware, so we'll just reuse that, assuming it's clean. I'll clean it up and uh, chase the threads if necessary. Um, we're going to need a little bit of access in the hood area here. We're probably going to need to remove both air boxes, the driver and passenger side. The task today is obviously just replacing the motor mounts. They will need to be firstly loosened from the bottom of the car with 13 millimeter nuts. Then we will go up top and take the 16 millimeter nuts off the top. Then it's disconnected. No, the engine's not going to fall out. It's just sitting in here. The engine weighs 450, 500 pounds. It's sitting on the subframe. We're going to need to lift the engine either from a, uh, you could use a crane, you could use one of those support bars from Harbor Freight, you could use a jack on wood and jack up the oil pan. We need to raise the engine maybe an inch or two. Then we're going to take the old mounts out. We're going to put the new mounts in, lower the engine back down onto the mounts and replace the hardware. Uh, with the belly pan out of the way, this car didn't actually have one, but if yours does, you've got a quarter turn Phillips here, another one here, and then it, it shares some screws with this back panel. So there's one there, one there, and then symmetrically one here and one here. So that'd be a total of six. Uh, anyways, once you get that off, you're looking at the bottom of the engine, and this thing right here is one of the motor mounts. This one doesn't look too bad. The two 13 millimeter nuts that hold the motor mount to the uh, front subframe are this one and this one. They're very easily accessible, and we can just spin those off right now. If you have an impact gun or just use a 13 millimeter six point socket on there, whatever drive you want, I would use three eighths or half. Um, spin those out, and then on the passenger side, this one is not very pretty. It's very oily. Um, and this is not the side of the car that the power steering pump is on, so it's not that. Uh, but same thing, 13 and 13. Let's get those done from down here. With the four 13 millimeter nuts removed from the bottom of the motor mounts, we can now come under the hood and disassemble the air boxes here. There's just a series of clips. There's a clamp here, one there. There should be one here. I'll replace that shortly. And another one back there. So there's four that hold the upper box onto the lower box. Then I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver or a six millimeter six point socket and release this here and just pull this entire assembly off the plenum. Noting that we will need to disconnect the mass airflow sensors. There's a tab on each side. I might need two hands. You press the tabs and wiggle the connector off. Uh, then that wire for the MAF comes into these little clips on the tube right here. And if we're going to remove the tube out of here, we got to take the wire out of the clips on both sides, and it's the same deal over here. So let's get the upper boxes and hoses out of here. The upper boxes are out of the way. That's an easy, quick two minutes. Um, it's probably not completely required that you do that, but it does just buy you some space, which is nice. So now looking here on cylinder bank one passenger side, we can look down there, see where the engine support arm sticks over, and it's actually down by the AC line there is the 16 millimeter nut. So obviously we're gonna need a decent setup of extensions. I'm using a few wobble extensions. If you have those, it buys you a little bit of room uh, to work around cables or the chassis braces or whatever might get in the way. So 16 millimeter socket, several extensions, and then I'm just gonna put that on the gun. If you don't have one of those, use a ratchet. For the driver's side motor mount top nut, that 16, I think it's gonna be easier to come under the car and install your tool. So I showed you the array of extensions 
I have going off of the socket. I started under the hood and I just kind of dropped it down in the general area. Then I came down here and picked up the tool and slid it over the nut there. So now I can lower the car yet again and put the gun on top and spin that nut off. Now with all the nuts removed, the 2.16s from top and 4.13s from bottom, we're ready to suspend the engine uh, temporarily here. So I'm using this Pittsburgh engine support bar. Uh, it's rated at 1,000 pounds. This engine weighs about half that or less. And uh, originally I was planning on using the uh, rear lifting point as well, right back there at the end of cylinder bank one, uh, cylinder head one. Uh, so I had removed the cabin airbox and the snorkel tube. I don't think any of that's necessary, so let's completely ignore that. I've got it perched right here on the fenders, which of course is chassis directly beneath that, so it's safe to lift. And then I'm just using the one point here by the alternator. There's a lifting point. There's two lifting points on this engine. The alternator and the one I just showed you back there on the firewall. So I'm just using this one. Some chain rated at like 2,000 pounds and then an eyelet rated at four or 5,000 pounds. Uh, so essentially you just hook it up to the eyelet and the bracket at the uh, alternator and the other end goes on the hook and then you just keep spinning until the engine is up high enough that it's lifted. Remember that 16 millimeter nut we removed. I can't film anything down there. All the power steering lines and oil filter housing lines are in the way. Uh, but keep lifting the engine um, either with this or feel free to use a jack, just a hydraulic floor jack underneath the car if you don't have access to a lift or would prefer to do it that way. Uh, just put a 2x4 plywood something in between the jack and the oil pan so you don't crack that and certainly don't get near the oil drain bolt on the pan. Uh, so we've got this side up high enough to, uh, should be able to wiggle the mount out underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and lift the car back up and see if we can change that mount. Now since we're only lifting half of the engine, this side I can tell is not high enough and I may need to get creative uh, maybe using the floor jack on this side to kick this engine up, this side of the engine up high enough to replace the passenger mount. But let's put it back in the air and see what we can see for the driver's side mount. And before we go crazy with lifting the engine up too high, we're going to go ahead and remove the fan and fan clutch here. As we raise the engine, the fan and the fan clutch are attached to the engine. They're going to come up to and they're going to hit into this cowl. So removing the fan and fan clutch is fairly simple. You do need the BMW tool for that because you have to counter hold. You can see three of the bolts on the water pump. There's a fourth one down there in the lower right corner. You have to counter hold those. And then the fan is spun um, anti-clockwise. So keep that in mind. So let's get the fan out of there. So looking here on the driver's side, first thing I notice is a big old gnarly crack in the rubber mount on this engine mount. So that thing is just cooked. The stud we see right there, the threaded stud, is where the 16 millimeter was, and it goes up into that hole on the motor mount bracket that's actually attached to the engine block. So I've lifted up the engine high enough, so at this point I can come in here and just wiggle this mount up a little bit. Oh, I might need to go a hair higher, because that stud is just shy of making it through. Um, should be able to fight with this, maybe rotate it, as you can see I got the left stud out, otherwise I'll just have to go and give that thing a couple more turns, but we're close here, wiggling this motor mount out. The new mount is in. I ended up using a safety stand with a piece of wood to distribute weight to move the engine about a millimeter further. Um, the larger stud there at the top was running into the motor mount, so I was able to just push the old mount up the stud into the hole on the bracket on the block, tilt it my way, and then pull it straight out. It took about two minutes. So now that that's in, I'm not going to put any hardware in yet. We're going to need to, when we lower the engine, we're going to need to make sure that it guides back down on that stud and doesn't sit on top of the stud. Now it's important to note here that these S62 mounts, the big part up there, the brackets on the block, have two holes. There's a, a hole towards, say, the rear bumper and a hole towards the front bumper. These mounts are shared for the M62 and the S62. Um, on the side of it, it actually says E39s use the front mount, the radiator side hole, whereas an E38 740 uh, would use the back hole, so make sure you get in the right one. So now that this is no longer holding anything, I'll probably use this tool over here, right on the strongest corner of the pan, lift this side up, and we'll do the same thing with this mount. So the passenger side actually feels a little bit easier, which I find surprising. Doing the best I can with the lighting here, but behind the wood right there is the upper stud on the new mount sticking up through the hole. So I just used this safety stand here to raise the engine just a hair past so this stud would stick out. I flipped the old one out, put the new one in, it's still loose. And then as we lower the engine slowly, we have to be careful that we guide that stud into that first hole again. So I'm gonna put this back down, it'll rest, and then we're ready to reinstall all the hardware. 
With the new mounts in, I went ahead and took the nuts, cleaned them up, chased the threads, and threaded them on by hand. I find it easiest, obviously, do, to do the 13s from the bottom of the car. The 16s as well. You can just get up there, drop it on the head, and snug it down uh, with your fingers. Then we need to move on to torquing. Torquing the top nuts is not very easy, at least over here. The torque wrench or the extensions in the sockets, it's just tricky to get it on there, but you did it before when you removed it. So set that up again. We're looking at 35, 36 pound feet for your 16 millimeter nuts, the ones on top of the mounts. Underneath, we're only talking about uh, about 17 pound feet, and that's rounding up, 16, 17 pound feet. So I'm gonna switch to a 3 8 drive torque wrench for that, torque the bottom nuts, and then we can reassemble the air boxes and we're done. All right, guys, that is it. Torque those bottom 13s to whatever I just said in the last clip, and we're done. If you've got the underbelly tray, put it back, lower the car, general maintenance when you're under the hood, check your fluids, check your filters, the uh, the basics. But that's it. Motor mounts, you're probably looking at uh, definitely less than two hours, unless you really struggle with um, the sockets or getting it on this top nut is definitely the hardest, the trickiest point. But otherwise, it's not too bad at all. So thanks for watching this one. Leave any comments down below. I love reading them. Send me an email, ryan at e39source.com with any questions or parts inquiries. I do sell parts for these cars uh, off of used secondhand wrecked cars. But uh, thanks for watching, and we'll talk in the next E39 Source video. Take care.